As an Austin police officer's fate hangs in the balance, two former police chiefs take the stand in a new line of questioning. And tonight on KXAN, I'll be talking about a cold front moving through before Thanksgiving, and I'll have your travel forecast for the holiday weekend. State and future federal leaders converge on the Lone Star State as President-elect Trump makes promises of strong tariffs on Mexican goods, and the President of Mexico issues a fiery response. Governor Greg Abbott visited Eagle Pass this afternoon to meet with National Guard soldiers and Department of Public Safety troopers stationed along the border. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jennifer Sanders. And I'm Will Dupree in tonight for Daniel Marine. The governor was joined by President-elect Donald Trump's choice for border czar Tom Homan. The two served meals to soldiers and state troopers ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday, with the governor taking the mic to thank them for the work they're doing on the border. Everybody knows that our, our military, National Guard and otherwise, as well as our Department of Public Safety officers, you serve 24-7. There are times when you're deployed, times when you're not deployed, uh, but the fact of the matter is, having you available to serve the state of Texas or the United States of America is essential for Texas and for our country to remain sovereign, free, and safe. Governor Abbott and Tom Homan later joined other Border Patrol officials in Edinburgh. And we'll have more on that visit on KXAN News at 6. This border visit comes as the incoming Trump administration flexes its financial muscle to try and achieve its goals on illegal immigration and drug trafficking. The president-elect says he will put tariffs on imported goods from the nation's three largest trade partners on his first day in office if they do not cooperate. And as NBC's Chris Pallone reports now, it's a plan economists warn will raise prices on a wide range of goods for everyone. At the Texas-Mexico border, President-elect Trump's border czar Tom Homan assessing the situation with Governor Greg Abbott as the administration prepares to take over in January. You can't have strong national security if you don't have border security. Immigration, a key campaign issue for Trump, and now the centerpiece of a new threat from the president-elect targeting the U.S.'s three largest trade partners. Trump posting on social media he plans to impose 25 percent tariffs on goods imported from Mexico and Canada and increase the tax on Chinese goods by 10 percent on his first day in office. Blaming the three countries for immigrants and drugs coming into the U.S. and daring them to stop it. Economists say people will see across the board price increases on things like vehicles, dairy, paper products, building supplies, electronics, and many other everyday items. The person or the entity that is that is importing that writes a check to the U.S. government to pay that import tax and then turns around and in many cases passes that tax along to consumers in the form of higher prices. It's unclear whether Trump is serious about these day one tax hikes or just using them as a negotiating tactic. But experts say just the threat alone could cause price increases before the president-elect is inaugurated. The more people, the more retailers and importers that rush to stockpile goods, the more it raises things like shipping and freight costs given those higher demands. In response, Canadian officials stressed the nation's close relationship with the U.S. and the Chinese embassy in Washington said trade between the two nations is mutually beneficial. Chris Pallone, NBC News. Mexico's president, Claudia Sheinbaum, issued a statement, a response to Trump's tariff threat, suggesting Mexico could retaliate with tariffs of its own. She also says Mexico has been working to slow the flow of migrants, noting that migrant caravans no longer reach the U.S. border, adding that Mexico is trying to stem the flow of drugs such as fentanyl, even though, quote, it is a problem of public health and consumption in your country's society. Construction is happening on new sections of the border wall in Texas's Starr County. The Texas Land Commissioner, Don Buckingham, showcased the efforts today on the 1,400-acre ranch in Rio Grande City. It's the same land she offered up to President-elect Trump a week ago for the construction of potential mass deportation facilities. Today, Buckingham said one mile of wall is expected to be completed in a week, and the rest of the project will be finished in the coming weeks. We can continue to deal major blows to the cartel's influence over South Texas. By working together, we will significantly reduce illegal immigration, end the trafficking of deadly drugs, and keep Texas families safe. 
Buckingham also announced the Jocelyn Initiative, which seeks to identify more land for the construction of deportation centers for violent criminals. She said several plots of land have already been identified for this purpose. And we're getting another look at those additional buoy barriers added to the Rio Grande last week. Governor Abbott posted this video to social media, writing that the state will, quote, use every tool and strategy available to hold the line. The floating marine barriers are along the river in Eagle Pass. Now, this is despite an ongoing federal lawsuit challenging the legality of the buoys. The state has also installed razor wire and steel fencing on the border. First warning weather with meteorologist Tommy House. Hey, hope you all had a great day today. We have some clouds building in right now. Here's our central Austin KXAN studio camera courtesy of West Shore Home. A tremendous shot. People who are out and about maybe shopping for a big feast are going to be cooking tomorrow. It's in the mid 60s. Winds are light and variable. Humidity at 41 percent. We'll see these clouds continuing to build in this evening. Find your city here. Temp check 63 in Cameron, 64 in Austin, 66 in Bastrop, upper 60s in Fayette County and west of I-35 toward the hill country. We're dealing with a, anywhere from the low 60s to the upper 60s in Lano and Mason County. Radar check. Just a few low level clouds are starting to kind of build their way in, but no rain at all. Throughout the entirety of the Lone Star State, as a matter of fact, it will be staying dry and cooling down to the upper 50s by 11 p.m. later on overnight tonight. Tomorrow, back up into the 80s. We'll have winds out of the south, 15 degrees above where we should be, but I'm timing the cold front moving through Wednesday night into your Thanksgiving, and I'll have your travel and Thanksgiving forecast in the next few minutes. All right, Tommy, thank you so much. Two former Austin police chiefs testified today in the sentencing hearing for Officer Christopher Taylor. A jury found Taylor guilty of deadly conduct last month. He and another officer shot and killed Maurice De Silva in 2019 while responding to 911 calls about De Silva walking around his downtown condo complex with a knife to his throat. KXAN's Brianna Hollis continues to cover this for us from the courtroom. Both former police chief Brian Manley and former interim chief Robin Henderson said on the stand they didn't believe Officer Taylor violated any department policy in this case. Manley was the chief at the time of the De Silva shooting and had final say over any discipline which he didn't issue. Do you know whether or not that investigation identified any policy violations on the part of Chris Taylor? It did not. Henderson took the stand next. She oversaw the department last year when Taylor's previous unrelated murder trial for the 2020 death of Mike Ramos ended in a hung jury. She also made the decision to take Taylor off leave last year and place him on paid admin duty. In your opinion, uh, should, should the fact that that officer followed the policies and training in place at that time, should, should the court take that into account? And should that be mitigating evidence for this officer that he was doing what he was trained to do by the court? Yes, sir. If courts were to extend grace to police officers who had engaged in fatal shootings or in shootings at all or in uses of force at all because the department did not find that they violated procedure, we would be in a situation where effectively the police department's discipline would be superseding part of the court's decision making and part of the jury's decision making. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely, yes, sir. Do you find that as do you find that to be problematic if that were the case? If that were the case. The remainder of Tuesday's proceedings include disagreements between the state and defense over the defense's motion to admit evidence pertaining to Ramos's criminal history into evidence. Most of the state's sentencing witnesses did rehash the Ramos case. Brianna Hollis, KXAN News. Testimony will resume the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. We've reported on a wealth of new flight options coming to the Austin airport next year. And now the airport is announcing an international flight will join the ranks of available nonstops. Canadian airline WestJet will launch a new nonstop route between Austin and Vancouver. That'll be in May. The seasonal route is set to launch on May 11th and will operate three times a week. The new Vancouver nonstop is the 14th new route announced to launch from AUS in 2025. Walmart says it is ending some of its DEI initiatives. The retail giant will also remove some LGBTQ related merchandise from its website. It's also winding down its nonprofit, the Center for Racial Equity, which funded programs for minorities. In a statement, Walmart said it's, quote, willing to change alongside our associates and customers who represent all of America. The retailer joins a list of companies stepping back from DEI efforts after experiencing pushback from conservative activists. 
The end of the year marks a time of celebration and family fun for some, but there is also an unfortunate trend that looms over the holiday season, an increase in burglaries. The Austin Police Department says November and December typically see 11% more burglaries than at any other point in the year. The good news is those crimes have seen a slight drop in the past few years. However, police recommend you should still ensure that any home security systems are updated and ready to go. Another common trend seen around the holidays, mail and package thefts. Police say that reported thefts are about 50% higher in December compared to the rest of the year. And officers are encouraging you to stay vigilant over these next few weeks. Unfortunately, we can't be everywhere um, and it, it's going to take a, a community effort. Um, that's why we, we, we highly recommend that you do your part, whether that's making sure your house is equipped with cameras um, and things of that nature so that we can potentially catch these people um, after the criminal act has taken place. Because most thefts happen when you're away from your house, Austin police recommend that you ship expensive packages to a safe and trusted location or enlist friends and neighbors to monitor or pick up your packages when they arrive. Thanksgiving marks one of the busiest travel holidays of the year. The Texas Department of Transportation says it's doing what it can to really ensure that drivers stay safe during their travels. Today, the agency also told us it's preparing for the winter months ahead. This morning, TxDOT showcased the the equipment it's using to keep the state's roads safe in case of a winter freeze. And the department's arsenal features more than 420 pieces of equipment, including five snow plows and 270 crew members ready to be deployed at any time. And although last year's winter was mild, TxDOT says after the 2021 winter storm, the agency isn't taking any chances. We learned a lot from the 2021 storm um, and, and mostly to be self-sufficient. Uh, many times in uh, a state as big as Texas, we were able to share resources uh, with other districts and, um, and, and get help from other districts if we needed or if other districts needed us, we could go help them. That was a statewide storm where all 25 districts were involved. So we learned to be more self-sufficient. So we've increased our stockpile of materials. We expanded our equipment fleet and we are ready to, to battle anything self-contained if that's what's necessary uh, this upcoming winter. All right, meteorologist Tommy House with us now, and we're not really dealing with winter weather just yet. <laughs> right. It was a little cooler this morning, but yeah, yeah it we felt have a so weather. nice though. It did. Yeah, my alma mater got some snow this morning, so really? my friends who were still there for grad school were texting me pics, and I'm like, well, it's in the 60s and sunny today, but I like that. You know what? That's why we move south. Have fun right? with that. Yeah. Some of this. <laughs> I'll talk about your forecast right now. Here's Dripping Springs Alley Medical Emergency Room Camry. Have a few drivers to and from, maybe some dinner plans. You're heading over to HEB to grab some groceries going to start cooking for Thanksgiving. Here's how it looks across the country right now. We have a storm system up in the northeast bringing some mountain snow and some rain for places like Boston down in New York City and this low pressure system that's going to be causing our cold front Wednesday into Thursday in the Lone Star State we are dry. Here's your travel forecast for tomorrow. We have some windy conditions and some rain maybe some snow for the Rockies but overall not too much to talk about. It's Thursday a coastal low that system is going to work its way up to the north and east and maybe some mountain snow for Portland of northern New England in some rain and wind down the I-95 corridor to Florida. And then for Black Friday, things are looking relatively calm and clear. Maybe some lake effect snow for portions of Buffalo and maybe Cleveland, Ohio and Syracuse, New York. So if you're traveling up there to the northern Midwest and western parts of the Northeast, keep that in the back of your mind. And for Saturday, things are looking a little bit more dry. Still some lake effect snow for portions of the Northeast. All right, for a localized forecast here in Austin tomorrow, we'll get back up into the 80s. We'll have a mix of some clouds and sunshine throughout the day at noon, 76. And then by the afternoon hours, we'll be about 15 degrees warmer than where we should be and find your city here east of I-35 some low to mid 80s how about 87 for a forecast high in Lano 85 up in San Saba but we're timing a cold front overnight Wednesday into your Thursday here's how it looks for Wednesday morning mix of some clouds but we are going to be mostly dry throughout the entirety of the southern plains and as the front approaches we'll still stay dry this is a dry front and behind it we have some colder air that's going to kind of fill its way on in and some showers and storms will develop east of us and also Houston may get a quick little shower, but besides that, Austin will be staying dry throughout the entirety of that front event. Your Thanksgiving forecast, so once the cold front sweeps through, we'll have our highs on Thursday in just the low 60s, so a little bit more seasonable for Turkey Day. And here are the high temperatures on Thursday, upper 50s to low 60s is the consensus across the board there. Now, 
early Friday morning, if you're going to try to head outside and get some shopping done during the morning hours, notice portions north and west of this freezing line could be seeing temperatures near freezing. San Saba, Mason, Lano at 34, Gillespie County 33 will stay in the upper 30s, low 40s in the Austin area, but bundle up throughout your Friday will be a little bit cooler with highs in the upper 50s. Tonight, 54 degrees in Austin, partly cloudy and Overall mild there compared to our normal low of 44. And tomorrow, 83 degrees, mostly sunny and relatively warm. Those winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour out of the south. Here's your first one weather, seven-day forecast. 60 on Friday. Notice those overnight lows in the upper 30s, low 40s. And then 68 for Saturday, 62 on Sunday. Another front moves through Saturday into Sunday. That front will also be dry and maybe some showers, 20% for Monday. Not a lot of confidence. We're in a drought. We need the rain, so we're hoping that 20% gives us a drop or two. Tommy, thanks so much. We still have a couple of days left in the KXAN Friendsgiving Challenge, and Team Evenings has officially surpassed our target of $75,000 raised thanks to more than 700 generous viewers out there. Team Mornings, though, is creeping very closely to that. All the proceeds will end up going to the Central Texas Food Bank. Although we have hit our goal, every extra dollar counts toward more meals for our neighbors in need. So if you would like to donate, please visit us at kxan.com slash friendsgiving. We'd like now to shine a light on stories of inspiring women here in Central Texas. You can go to kxan.com to nominate someone from the community. Look for the Remarkable Women tab on our homepage, and our local winner will then travel to LA, where 125 women from across the country will be honored. The national winner will then win $25,000 that will go to the nonprofit of her choice. You can send in those nominations right now. We're taking them through December 20th. We'll be right back. Bill O'Reilly on Cuomo. You're right, Cuomo, and that hurts me to say. America's favorite sparring duo with TV's liveliest, most honest debate. So I took notes, Cuomo, for you. Tonight at 8, 7 Central, only on News Nation. To find News Nation, go to joinnn.com. The Texas House of Representatives is getting into the holiday spirit by installing a 23-foot Virginia pine tree in the House chamber. The tree arrived at the Texas Capitol building after taking a four-and-a-half-hour journey from Elves Christmas Tree Farm. Now, that's in North Texas in Denison. After a long trip down south and a bit of muscle, the colossal symbol of the holidays stood tall in the House chamber. Now, per tradi tradition, members of the House and their families will decorate the tree with lights, and ornaments reflecting the distinct character of each Texas House district. Going in depth right now, according to the Texas Farm Bureau, more than 4 million real Christmas trees are sold in the Lone Star State each year. Each purchase benefits local farms and agricultural businesses, which helps boost the state's economy. According to an economic study by the Texas A&M Forest Service, in 2022, the Christmas tree industry brought in more than $714 million dollars and supported close to 6,000 jobs. University of North Carolina coach Mac Brown, who won a national championship at the University of Texas, will not return to the Tar Heels for next season. Brown will coach the regular season finale, finale Saturday, but a decision has not been made on whether he will coach a bowl game. Brown, who has three years remaining on his contract, indicated his plans to return for a seventh season as recently as yesterday. Brown served as the head coach at Texas for 16 seasons before resigning in 2013.